So hello and welcome, and this is a new VBM podcast. I'm Mike Pittman, and I'm here with Mr. Dowie Tapper, a man that's been with us for a few years now, and I thought it'd be about time some people got to know him. Uh, so, been at VBM for nearly three years, is that right? Yeah, well, getting close to three years by now. <laughs> you went away. Uh, you've managed to race for Tanskin Racing for us, you've been at Street Fighter, You've been in VB in many different types of cars, driving uh, Clios, you've driven Porsches, you've driven uh, Lexus in ITC, you've driven our endurance teams, um, many different things. You've managed to amass uh, 10 wins for the team as well, in your name. You've also managed to bring us 19 podiums. How does all that sound? Um, yeah, I never quite looked at it like that, but... Um... To be fair, though, I mean, if I look back, most of them have been uh, scored in 2013, back in Formula Challenge. And after that, you know, the success kind of faded away a bit. But I've had my few, uh, you know, a fair share of success in between as well. A good, ra- a few good races. I, I don't think you can say it's faded away. You, you will get on well, to it, but you only, you only won last week. Yeah, and, well, I mean, very, yeah, yeah, true. No, you're right. But still, I mean, that that's my personal feeling about it anyway. GPV related especially after 2013 2014 wasn't all that good. 2015 I, I kind of retook of a, you know, um, shaped myself if you will. Well I suppose coming on to that, I suppose most people um, that know us and, and know the team probably got to know you first off, like you say, in Formula Challenge back in 2013 at GPVWC. Um, back uh, starting off, at, well, in Korea really, but I suppose, I don't know whether you, you kind of made your name there, but you really started to show yourself properly at Turkey. Do those two race, those two race rounds particularly ring a bell to you? They, they do to me. Uh, yeah, especially uh, Turkey, I mean, like you mentioned, I, won, I did a double win there, which still to this day is my biggest achievement, I think. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and three, I mean, obviously, race one. I mean, it's pretty clear why that is still very much, um, you know, vibrant back uh, back there in the memories. Uh, happy memories for you? I made a name. What was that? Happy memories for you? Uh, well, Korea was one. We're pretty much happy all the way right until the last lap. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for those that, make... that don't know, I suppose there was a... a, a... Should we say a collision, or should we say a, uh, yeah, well, coming together, I, I, I suppose, I, on, on the I, final corner, but doing the gentlemanly thing uh, and waiting, so you didn't quite get the result that you could have potentially had, but I think it showed um, exactly who you are as a driver more. Yeah, uh, I just misunderestimated the, the, the whole situation, because up until the point every lap I'd been quicker through the, through the left kink, because I had a car that was set up for higher down for so way better through there but yeah he went off the throttle a bit earlier than i expected i hit him right up the uh, up the back and you know i felt so shitty about it or but, but what a way to bounce what a way to bounce back the next round coming yeah, out with, with mean, two wins yeah I, I just really wanted well i mean at that point i didn't really want it to show like what I could do, but I just wanted to do the best I could. I mean, I, I got in halfway through the season. There wasn't really much for me to lose, so just went uh, flat out. Yeah, and I think that's probably what actually made you even more, uh, showed you off more, is the fact you came in mid-season and then suddenly were beating guys that had been doing races for half a season already. It's one of my highlights, watching you drive through in, in race two at Turkey. And then being on board, actually, riding through and yeah. doing that. Yeah. Well, yeah. To be fair, <laughs> looking back at race, I mean, at the moment, I'm obviously pretty, pretty uh, pleased with it. I still am. Don't get me wrong. But I did get a bit of help here and there. But overall, it's just pff, one hell of a race. I overtook, that... like, if I look back at the footage, I overtook three guys at one point, which I didn't even notice when I was racing. But Yeah. Overtaking that many, much. you didn't even notice three of them. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah, pretty much. It, it, that's oh. the thing with first laps. It's so busy, sometimes you don't even notice you're doing something absolutely nuts. I think, yeah, I mean, getting a bit of luck is, is all the bit. All the best sim racers have a little bit of luck at times. But how how did you come to sim racing, anyway? 
Uh, I don't know exactly. I mean, I, I, I've sort of forgotten over time, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I started with this Dutch league, as you do, you know, when you're with people, uh, you know, a bit. And, yeah, I don't know. It sort of just happened. And, it, you know, guys there already noticed I had a certain, you know, talent for it. But I, I was just a rough time, really, at that point. Hmm. And obviously that, you know, coming from there, it, it's coming to what you are now, I suppose, which which at the moment you're driving exclusively endurance. Uh, um, yeah. And so, you know, at the moment, the last two races have come as victories, driving over at BEC. Um, what about, what is it about endurance that excites you? Uh, I don't know, it's just something about uh, the driving the longer stints, I don't know, it just works for me. Because, um, like, what I've done the last few years is, all the open wheel and and you know mostly just the the the, the quote uh, you know air quotes here uh, print series if you will but I've I've yeah I look I just like the longer races I don't know why it just fits me better I feel more at home just doing longer stints in as consistent as I can be it just works for me I don't know why it just does. I, I mean, you know, you can't complain. You obviously, it obviously does work for you. Um, you happy with the, the team you've got around you there? As well, you, you fancy the next few races? There's a, a three races left of that season, or two two races left? Of that season? Uh, yeah, it's uh, six hours of Nürburgring, and then after that, there's the big one uh, at Le Mans, 24 hours. Yeah, yeah I mean... It... Sorry, looking forward to them both? Uh, yeah, especially. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to it in general, really, because we've been we've been doing well lately. Um, you know, Sebring, we came all, uh, out of it with a victory, albeit in room two, but you know, it still counts as a victory in the end. Um, Turkey as well. So we're looking good. We just really want to show uh, what we can do in room one, which is our goal for uh, Nurburgring, obviously, and Lamar as well. And and looking at the start of the season, especially we didn't get a very smooth start if you will you know with silverstone with uh three drivers that didn't really know each other that much i'd only really talked to them like a few times but you know after after that uh, i got to know robert especially cool guy by the way you know he, he's very quick as well he has to he underestimates his, his uh himself which uh, totally uh trains to me because i do the same thing but <laughs> But in general, yeah, after a while, things just came together. James joined the team. Uh, don't forget uh, Mr. Simicic, obviously. That was a big help as well, because he got us a setup that just is a very good base in general. Yeah, from there on, we just worked our way up, and you know, we're here now. It's great to watch. It really is. It's, it's a different aspect to... From from my point of view, it's a different aspect to VBM, so it's it's great to great to see and uh, see what you do there. Um, obviously, you've driven quite a few different cars. The one thing I hadn't even mentioned that you'd uh, you'd also done it over at GPVWC was the uh, the race of champions uh, a couple of years ago now, and that was with James that you're driving the endurance with. How, how did that go for you? Uh, well, I mean, the team side of things went very successfully, and I need to be. Very honest about this, and James has also noted the, noted this a few times afterwards. He did carry me the first few rounds because I was so nervous, and I kept, you know, messing things up and doing stupid stuff, and he just kept carrying me forward. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I and then after that, the individual stages came, and I sort of just threw it away the first few rounds. But I was okay with that because the team's uh, event the days before which was just way cooler anyway so i'm okay with with how that went it's a it's another thing to add on to your cv effectively isn't it it's great so from from all this i'm getting the impression do you prefer working as part of a team rather than being on your own then do you find that easier uh well i mean yeah i mean as 2014 has shown especially with uh street fighter and you know the way stuff eventually panned out with um i did have a teammate in the end but and and we did the best we could, but 2014 wasn't the best season in Super Cup. And in 2015, I had to do most of the stuff by myself. Um, with, I, I really do have to, I, I can't 
stress this enough um, with the help of Mr. Tringas himself, obviously, because, you know, he felt that he he had a way to help me, which turned out he really did. You know, the first few laps, uh, first few races were a bit sketchy, but after that, we were good. And, yeah, I just, like I said, I some, uh, otherwise I just need someone to, to work with, or need, I would, I'd like to have someone to work with. Because on my own, I tend to just do that great in general. Yeah, I mean, I think like, you brushed on there with the the Super Cup aspects that you you were the mainstay for those couple of years, and you seem to have a uh, conveyor belt of drivers uh, in the car next year over the period of time. Um, as you say, even William jumping in himself at one point, but um, nonetheless, you did you could see uh, your your development over those two years quite quite consistently, and it was mentioned quite heavily in the broadcast. And I know it's not just me that thinks that. Um, so, if you had of, of all these teammates you've had, who's your favourite teammate you've ever driven with, across any series, any league, and you know? Um, that's a that's a good one. Um, the most obvious one would have, been, um, you know, uh, JJ James Johnson. Obviously, because you know we working together in endurance and all that, and I've worked with him before, also endurance related mostly. Um. But I still feel uh, that the first teammate I've had within GPV, Mikko uh, Ekonen, was still, I don't know why this, maybe it's because he was, you know, so to speak, my first, if you will. But yeah, I don't know, there was just something there. We had fun with everything. And even though I, I consistently was quicker than him, we still managed to get the best out of both of us. So really, I think that's that's still the best teammate I've had so far. That's it, very, it, very nostalgic of you. Least, yeah, or is it? It's well. Let's say they're 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 Ape, James and Miko. At least. <laughs> very good. Uh, on that sort of vein, what's what's your favourite car you've ever driven? Sim racing. Um, we. Oui. Um, if you have uh, if you had asked me this before I went to uh, VEC, I would have said the uh, Formula Challenge car twenty thirteen. Obviously, but um, as things stand now, I'm actually a big fan of the BMW we're driving over there, the endurance. I don't know why, but somehow my interest shifted when RF2 came around and we got used in leagues, and I don't know why it just just happened, really. The, the, the BMW that seemingly no one else is a fan of in, in the series. Well, maybe I should, you know... Um, well, let's just say GT in general. Then I mean, I, I guess my <laughs> my interest sort of shifted because I know if James is, is he'll probably be like, "Oh, but the BMW is the worst." And I, I know it is, but you know, there's still something about it, considering we're the only ones in it, apparently. So, yeah, is, yeah. It, is it is it one of those things? It's like you know, one of your your first car or your first you know, you make memories in it. It doesn't matter if it's the best car or not. It's yeah. it means more to you. I, I think it's because it's really the first. Um, yeah, it's really the first competitive uh, thing I've been in a GT car, really. So I think that's that's why it sticks with me. So far, I've only been either in types or open wheelers or touring cars at the best, but never really in 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 GT racing. So away from sim racing, do you watch GT racing? Are you a Formula One fan? What 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 do you, what do you watch outside of sim racing itself? Uh, well, I've won is the big. The uh, biggest thing I watch, I watch it the most as well. Uh, I tend to to keep up with uh, world endurance, obvious for obvious reasons by now. But um, especially when Porsche came back, they sort of just it sort of just took my interest. Um, and yeah, that's it's. You, you're a big Porsche fan. Uh, no, I don't know. It just I don't know. There was or something. Or just the about series, because. Well, I think uh, the fact that I heard stuff about it, like Porsche came in and then. You know, there were three big names in the in LMP1 class that I did, were just pfft, out of here. Pretty nuts if you look at the cars right now, but yeah. I don't know. Something about it just grabbed me, and I've been watching it ever since, really. And nice. out of that, yeah, I watched the occasional IndyCar race, but yeah, most of the stuff, are pretty much, I, I gazed at it every once in a while, but that's about it. You got a favorite real driver out there that you you follow or is it more just the series that you follow 
Or a team, maybe. I'm, I'm more... Uh, yeah, I guess. I just mostly just watch for the sport, really. I've become a bit of a fan of, of um, Verline after, especially Bahrain, or Manor as it really, Manor. Hmm. That, that's, if, if I had to put myself out as a fan of something, I would have said uh, Manor in F1 at this point. I don't know why, but it's just something about it. Always like in the underdog. Is that the, that yeah, the feeling? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's just with the whole thing they've, they've been through with, uh, you know, at the end of 2014 and then and actually managing to get back on the grid in 2015 and still being around and actually being able to fight, you know, at the lower end of the field is just, I don't know, just really good to watch, if I'm honest. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree at all. Um, so, so going back to sim racing a little bit, what what wheel and setup do you use? And I know a lot of talk now is about three monitors, and you have to have a certain wheel, and you have to have these amazing pedals, and you have to have this. But is that the case? What what do you what what are you packing at home? Well, I think uh, wheel and and all that is really down to to your personal preference. Um, I'm sure there's an advantage to three monitors. I'm still rocking the single monitor, twenty three inch. And a few months ago, I uh, I retired my G25, which had been going, by the way, for six years strong, and it's still working today. Um, but yeah, Seems to become yeah, a museum uh, piece. Yeah. yeah, well, to be fair, uh, my my younger brother is actually using it as we speak, so it's still running, still going strong. Um, uh, but as of right now, I'm using a uh, Thrustmaster T300. Including, uh, I believe they the TP three A pedals, I believe, whatever. But yeah. Anyway, they were included. Fantastic. Uh, is that you got a younger brother racing your old wheels? Does that mean we're going to see a another tapper on the on the circuit soon? Don't know. I think so, but only time will tell. Really, at this current time, I would, uh, I'm I'm going to keep it at no, but. Maybe things will change. We'll see. There's, there's not know. many, uh, not many brotherly doubles out there. It could make a really big. Uh, I don't know. There's obviously a couple out there, but it would make a, a particular uh, selling point for you, I suppose. Imagine an endurance team of tappers. That would. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I guess. But yeah. So well, we'll see. I, I, I'm not expecting anything of it, but we'll see. So, what's the future hold for yourself then? We uh well that's a that's another tricky one. Um right now honestly I I'm not that much of a person to think ahead as far as that, but um right now obviously I'm gonna focus on, on endurance stuff. Mostly virtual endurance, obviously. Um yeah, after that we'll see. I mean maybe I'll do another career ladder thingy. I don't know, honestly. All one big question mark at this A man of mystery for the future. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, well, it's been great getting to know you. Just a little glimpse into the Mr. Tapper that we know at VBM. Um, but the wider world might get to know a bit about you now as well, uh, more than just the racing. Um, obviously, guys, you can see uh, Tapper and the rest of the endurance team uh, at the end of the month. Is it end of the month? Start of the next month. Apologies. Uh, start of the next one, I believe. Uh, so start next month, uh, you can catch them, and then Le Mans the month after, um, which is obviously the big one that we we'll all get involved in. I know that everybody will, in the sim racing community will be rallying around that one particularly. Um, so this is this has been our first part. Um, it's a big thank you from from me for everyone listening. Uh, Mike, I'm sure Dowie, uh, thank you very much for taking time to uh, to be involved. No problem. Been a pleasure, and uh, we uh, look keep keep checking the uh, the the feed here for any more info and a few more drivers that we'll be meeting over the coming weeks.